In recent weeks, we've been hearing from the leaders of so many different Canadian businesses as they navigate the impact of COVID-19. That includes views from Bay Street, where Canaccord Genuity has just reported its latest quarterly results. And while there were challenges, no doubt, for their domestic capital markets business, they did see revenue growth, noticeable growth in their wealth management business. Dan Davio is the president and CEO of Canaccord Genuity, and he joins us now to talk a little bit more about the state of the industry. Dan, on that front, what would you say? I mean, Big picture right now, what's been happening in your industry? Uh, well, we've got we've got a big global business, so we've got we've we've been able to see lots of things going on, John, throughout our global business. On our on our wealth side, obviously March 30th, which is when our quarter came out, was probably the worst day you could measure a wealth business. Notwithstanding that, we've seen a remarkable recovery from March till now. I think your uh, viewing audience has seen that in the marketplace, and we've seen that in our wealth business as well. Our assets topped out at 72 billion. Uh, we finished uh, yesterday, sort of, at 66 billion. So we've almost recovered from our eyes. Uh, from that perspective, and we've seen an incredible amount of volume there. With market volatility, yeah, assets have come down, but people trade a lot. People trade from one security to another. So we've seen that a lot both in our wealth business, but also our capital markets business. An incredible amount of activity out there. So uh, that's certainly been going on. And as well, from a financing perspective, companies that thought they had enough money three months ago may not think they have enough money now. So we've seen an incredible amount of financing activity. I think if you look at the U.S. and global stats, May could have been the busiest month in the last many years in terms of financing activity out there. And we're obviously a huge participant, particularly in the technology, healthcare, and mining arena in that. So, you know, right now, business is buoyant. M&A has slowed down a little bit. Uh, you'd expect that when people can't meet, when me and you are meeting this way. Um, so you'd expect that, but uh, that's, I think, more pushed out to the right than disappeared. Well, I'm glad you mentioned all that activity of companies doing activities in the capital markets to ensure that they've got some cash right now. Um, what are those companies saying about their outlook? Because, uh, Dan, I don't have to tell you, we've seen the stock market continuing to move up here, even though when you look at the economic picture today and then you add to it all the other big stories we're talking about right now, there hasn't been a lot to cheer about. There hasn't been a lot to celebrate out there. What have you been hearing from those businesses that it seems like investors are pretty optimistic about where those businesses could be, you know, six months, a year from now. Yeah, there's been, you know, I'm, the market is meant to be a, a, a picture of the economy six months in advance. It's, it's a leading indicator. And I think what the market's telling you is they think the economy will get better in six or 12 months from now. You know, I don't know if that's right or wrong. There's an incredible amount of government liquidity that's put, been put into the marketplace, an incredible amount of buying of corporate bonds, both in the U.S. and Canada, that provides an immense amount of, you know, funds on the sideline for the equity market, which is what we're seeing, which is why you're seeing a pretty buoyant equity market right now. And, you know, from a company perspective, companies are cautious and they want to make sure they have sufficient balance sheets to live through any uh, market predicament. So if you're a company out there and your stocks mainly recovered, because the stock markets mainly have recovered, you're in the market accessing money to make sure you're ready for any eventual reality and volatility that's out there. And that's what we're seeing. On the mining side in particular, you've seen, again, all this government issuance. So people are obviously going towards gold, which they have done historically. Seen a record amount of gold financings in the last 12 months. I think we've done 88 gold you know, mining hmm. type financings. We've raised like a billion four for mining companies, uh, 10 deals in the last three months in Canada alone. So we've seen an immense amount of activity in the mining side, you'd expect that but also technology. Um, there's lots of technology companies out there financing and obviously healthcare, given what's going on broadly speaking, there's tons of healthcare companies financing as well. You mentioned what's been going on in the bond market, and of course, we are awaiting a decision by the Bank of Canada on interest rates. Most people likely more focused on what we might hear from the Bank of Canada on all that asset buying, including in the bond market. What's been your assessment of the response to COVID-19, both by our central bank and by the government? Yeah, well, certainly our central bank, as well as the U.S. Uh, Fed, you know, there, there's no amount of money they will not spend to support the market here. And I think that's what the market is perceiving. So, you know, the unprecedented move to buy corporate bonds, for example, in an in in immense amount of size, even high yielding corporate bonds. 
So if you're a pension fund out there and you need to liquidate something because you've got to fund your underlying uh, you know, requirements, there's you don't need to sell equities. You can sell fixed income and you can sell it to the government pretty much because they're, they're, they're the buyer. So that's been the support you've seen in the equity market. So uh, Canada said they're not going to let rates go below zero. So we'll see what happens in a half hour from now or in 10 minutes from now. Um, but you know, I think we're going to continue to see what we've seen. I think the government reaction fiscally, uh, financially, has been pretty adequate and certainly has supported the market. Dan, I'd like to just talk more broadly speaking about COVID-19 because we're seeing the impact um, um, on businesses, not just short-term earnings, but just how it's fundamentally shifting the way that businesses operate. Um, what have you been doing at Canaccord Genuity? What have you noticed in your own business operations beyond just deal activity that, mm -hmm. that, that may change forever because of COVID-19? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I know a lot of people have speculated. I think it's too easy for me to really speculate what's going to change forever. Uh, personally, I'd love to get people back to work when it was, when it's safe to do that. Um, you know, we're taking a really cautious approach towards that. And again, we operate in Toronto and Vancouver, different markets are different, but we also operate in Boston and New York and in San Francisco and London and Australia. So we've got a big global business and each of our markets is different. We're taking a different approach in each of those markets. Um, we're managing incredibly well. We, we had an immense investment in technology years ago. Uh, good luck or good planning, I'm not sure, but we're very, adept at operating remotely and it's working incredibly well. Um, you know, and you can see that in our results. That being said, there's a collegiality effect, um, camaraderie effect of working in an office together. They're sharing best practices and ideas. We're trying to do that. You know, I think there will be a change to how people work. Uh, certainly not everybody that used to be in the office needs to be in the office. Uh, and you take major metropolitan centers like New York, where people were commuting an hour and a half each way, and quite frankly, they're working in that hour and a half or those three hours now. So I think there is going to be an effect. This this has worked way better than I would have thought it would have worked. If had somebody asked me this four months ago, um, that being said, you know, I don't think office space goes to zero at any time soon. Hmm. Has has the situation uh, become more complicated as we've seen uh, social unrest primarily in the United States? I mean, you're talking about the fact that you guys are a global business and you, and you have locations in, in a number of cities across North America. Uh, we had a report earlier in the program where it wasn't just the focus on retailers who are you know being cautious and in some cases boarding up some of their store windows. There was a reference to someone saying, hey, asset managers want to make sure that they are, they are ready for any of this unrest hitting streets. What's been your assessment on, on everything that's been unfolding on that front? Yeah, we would have 10 or 15 or 20 percent of our people, depending on the office in the U.S., going to the office last week. I, I, I venture to say, I don't know what that answer is today, but I venture to say that answer that today it's closer to zero percent. I, I don't think people are going to the office right now, especially if they're located on Madison or you know someplace downtown. So th there's definitely a short-term impact from that. Again, we're able to operate remotely. It's easy. All our trading desks, in fact, we had record trading profits last quarter. Um, that really bolstered our results, and they continue to be strong right now. And, you know, we can do that all remotely. So if we don't have to send people to the office in an unsafe environment, we have no intention of doing that. Hmm. And is there anything you might say just about the, the, the issues we are now uh, grappling with. Um, obviously, we, we've seen at the center of that protest activity, uh, a number of business leaders have started to speak out about that issue, including in this country as well. Is there anything you might add to the conversation? I, I think I think I, I think responsible business leaders have all said the right things, and certainly at our organization, we agree with that. Um, what what I can tell you is. Uh, from 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 an organization's perspective, we want to be as supportive as as, as we possibly can. Dan, really good to get your perspective. Thanks a lot. Obviously, a lot on the go right now, and uh, nice to get an update from you, Dan Davio, President and CEO of Canaccord Genuity, joining.